Well, this was going to be episode three of Best Brush Gun Cartridge 2021, and we were going to shoot the uh, 3030. But instead, there have been so many questions raised, at least in my mind, and I think in some of y'all's as well, as to whether or not the bullets are striking the coupons, flipping around, and then restabilizing base first. And, um, and I think I've got a test set up here, at least the beginnings of it, where we might be able to prove or disprove that theory. And so that's what we're going to do in this video. And I actually have the 35 Remington, the Marlin Model 336, back out here. And we also are going to reshoot um, a couple of the bullets from the 45 Colt 1892 from last week. And, um, and like I said, I hope we can find out whether or not the bullets are actually restabilizing base first. So let me get down there and repopulate that range. And if you wonder why I keep looking over the top of the camera, well, I'll show you but I'll show you that here in just a minute. And there's a big thanks that goes along with it. So let me get down range and set up those targets and then we'll do some shooting. So let me walk you down here and show you what we are uh, what we're trying to accomplish. You see I've got some stakes and some targets pre-positioned and I've already started this process just to see if I can make it work. But I have a uh, I have a bore scope mounted in the 35 Remington, and uh, since it has a um, since it has a scope on the rifle, then I was better able to do this. But you can see we have a green laser right here, green laser spot, and that's where the green laser is from the bore scope. And I've got the scope itself aimed right here. And this is at 20 yards. Now let's move right here. And now we're at 15 yards and I came down here with the target and I figured out where the green laser was and then I stapled it to a cross member and then began the process of attaching the cross member here. So here's our 15 yard target. This is 15 yards past the small coupon but I'm gonna have a target at 20 yards past the coupons, 15 yards past the coupons, then we've got 10 and five yards. So I'm gonna have four targets at five yard increments after the bullet hits the coupon. So let me get the rest of those set up and we'll start shooting. Okay, so you're going to see the 15 or the 5 and the 20 yard impacts and and I'm not worried too much about about the uh, group size as much as I am just seeing if we get the impact in both locations. So let me set up another coupon and we'll take a second shot. Man messed up everything. Let me go check and see. Okay, I was kind of worried that I'd mess things up. The first shot went dead center through this stick, and the second shot only caught half of that one. And so I was kind of thinking maybe I might have this second shot would have destroyed the target location of the first shot. But it didn't. Because this is the first shot right here nice round hole larger than um, you know it's an ex extra size hole and then this with this one here that is key holing is the one that glanced off the side of the stick that's the second shot and we go to the second target this guy is a little bit farther moved farther away still key holing that guy is looks pretty good 
and now we're at 15 yards. The keyhole has gotten worse. This guy still looks good. And then at 20 yards, it's really interesting that this guy has, the keyhole is not nearly as dramatic. So I think it's starting to uh, maybe stabilize. I don't know. We have no idea what's going to happen if it keeps going down range. And this guy hasn't changed a bit. It's still just a really nice larger than caliber hole. So we didn't really learn much there. I suspect that the first shot mushroomed on the stick. That's kind of my guess right now that it just mushroomed on that stick and uh, did a was a pretty uniform mushroom. I don't see how that's possible, but um, I think that might be what happened. And then the second one that hit the side of the stick was clearly more destabilized. So let's get set up with the 45 Colt rounds and let's uh, shoot those three different or two different bullets and uh, see how they perform. Well, I, I set up over here because I wanted to be able to show you in case the, ba the bass have been going crazy right here while I've been trying to film. And um, I think they've got some brim cornered or some shad or something. But um, but I'm not going to, the lighting has changed where, at the shoot, where I was shooting. And so I didn't want to drag all that out anyway. So I'm going to run through the, the target cameras real quick and let you see that, see the uh, shots from the, and I called this the 240 grain XTP mag. It's not. It's a 265 grain wide flat nose bullet from Cast Performance. And so that's the bullet I wanted to show. 265 grain hard cast. And then the 300 grain XTP mag. And so that's what you're going to see right now. And then we'll set up the ballistic gel because we're not going to, I'm pretty sure after what we saw here, with the 35 Remington, we're not going to um, get a definitive answer on whether or not the, all of the bullets are going backwards, if any at all. And so I'm going to set up the ballistic gel. We'll shoot through the coupon and then hopefully we'll capture a bullet in the ballistic gel after it goes through the coupon. And we'll see what it looks like. Well, I was hoping to have a little bit more definitive results from the targets alone, but but now we are going to shoot into the ballistic gel. It's right down there. I'll point it out to you. We're going to start with the 200 grain hard cast bullet from Cast Performance in the 35 Remington. We'll shoot until we get contact with a gel block, shooting through a coupon, and then we'll do the same thing with the 265 grain hard cast bullet in the 45 Colt. So let's get shooting. Did I miss all together? Okay, 265 grain hard cast bullet from Cast Performance. 45 Colt.
Well, I think the um, I think the bouncy thing here got the best of my assistant because his enthusiasm was certainly not matched by the performance of the 265 grain bullet. At least from our test perspective, um, it was not matched by that bullet because those guys, the 265 grain hard cast bullet, wide flat nose hard cast bullet, they were blowing through both blocks of ballistic gel. And so we have no way of knowing whether or not they were reversing in flight. But we have enough data otherwise that, uh, that helps me to make a fairly confident assertion. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But the first thing let's do is let's take a look at the um, at the 265 grain target. And I'm not going to go in great detail. And remember, we're not talking about group size here. Uh, we're just talking about bullet stability and what happens after the bullets impact the coupon. This guy missed the coupon altogether, and so it looks like a regular bullet hole. These two guys. This one came in at, um, at 42 caliber, and this one came in at 44 caliber. Um, and so, uh, so I don't believe that's what was happening there. And those two bullets, bullet holes remained consistent in size and configuration all the way to until they disappeared off of the, off of the 20 yard target. Um, and I mentioned in the video that I didn't have the uh, shots on camera and that's because the I had the target set up for the scoped um, 336 and then when I shot the first groups out of the uh, non scoped 1892 well they were down uh, most of the shots were actually off of the paper and then when I reshot to get that group right there my assistant didn't get the camera set up for that one so uh, let's take a look at the 300 XTP mag and there's something else to be learned here as well but these guys at, at the five yard target five yards from the uh, coupon were definitely destabilized and then we look at 10 yards past the coupon and they were just a complete mess and then at 20 yards they didn't even get on paper and then all right 15 yards and then at 20 yards we got one back on paper but that's because he blew through the horizontal bar of the 15 yard target and was deflected back onto this guy. But that begs the question because the 300 grain XTP did pretty well in the uh, 45 Colt uh, video from last week as far as the destabilization goes. And so why did this round, which the test setup should be about identical, why is it so much, why does the, did the 300 grain perform so poorly in this test? And it's the nature of non-scientific testing, I think. And when I go cut pieces of privet hedge to make the coupons, some of them are going to be, depending on the time of the year, where I cut them from, they're going to be drier, harder. And I showed last year, I did a test where, where I tested dried coupon material versus green coupon material. And there was a dramatic increase in deflection with the dried material. So the hardness of the coupons makes a big difference. Now let's get down to the 300 or to the, uh, three, uh, the 35 Remington because we did capture a bullet and it's right here. And let me show you this guy. And you can see that the nose is deformed and you can see some striations on there. I hope it shows up on the camera. Some striations that indicate contact with the coupon and so I believe we had a glancing blow there with the coupon and and then and you can tell that it's not uniform at all and then when it went into the ballistic gel let me get my face out of there when it went into the ballistic gel it shed some of those some of that deformation and you can actually see that in the first gel block but I didn't get that one out because well I'm trying to keep this thing a little bit short but this guy here was nose first so even with dramatic destabilization um, he went in just fine now here are the shots on target and we've got one right here that that dead centered if you'll remember in the video I talked about how it dead centered the one of the sticks and then the second shot actually glanced off of this off of the stick 
and was destabilized. And so pretty good, pretty good shots here. We've got a we've got a very consistent, consistently deformed nose there is what I would suspect. And then we've got a destabilized bullet there. Now let's see what happens as we move down range. No, dr nothing dramatic changes. This guy is still destabilized. This guy is still on track. Okay. That was at uh, 10 yards. Now here's our 15 yard target. Our keyhole is showing no signs whatsoever of, of flipping at 15 yards past the coupon. And our, the bullet that went through the coupon uh, basically nose first is really on track. So um, now we get to the 20 yard. And I said that this guy was showing, looking like it was restabilizing, but I think it's just an oscillation. As the bullet is, is no longer stable, it's just going to oscillate in different patterns. That would be, be my guess. But that's a hypothesis. And uh, this whole, <laughs> whole video is about a hypothesis, hypothesis that I made. But there is the bullet that, that uh, dead centered the stick. So what have we learned? Well, hypotheses are what they are. We, we look at some data and then we make a guess and testing is how we determine whether or not the hypothesis was correct. And, um, and I think what we've shown here is that there's not enough evidence whatsoever to indicate that bullets are actually flipping and restabilizing base first because number one, those 265 grain uh, cast performance bullets that were punching the nice clean holes, they were actually smaller than the diameter of the bullet itself. And so that just tells me that just like in the, um, in the 35 Remington that dead centered the coupon, there was a reasonably uniform nose uh, expansion. And I think that's what's happening. It happened in the 265 grain bullets as well as the uh, 35 Remington bullets. So um, I hope we can put that one to bed. We'll move forward with more testing next week. And I've got some great 30-30 ammo. And, um, and so we're going to break out the 1949 uh, Winchester Model 94 in 3030. And I'm going to talk a little bit about history. And um, I think you're going to like that gun because it's, um, it represents what we all think of. Those of us that are from maybe the uh, boomer generation, when we think about, um, about historic firearms, it's a gun like this that really pushes my buttons. And I think a lot of you guys as well. So I hope you'll stick around for next week when we look at the 3030 Winchester as related to a brush cartridge. So I want to say thanks for watching. And if I, have, if I haven't forgotten anything really big, but I'll see you in the next video. And remind me in the comments if there's something that I forgot to cover.